So biometrics is a way to uh, uh, automatically just identify someone using uh, automated uh, systems. And it's been in uh, research and development for about 150 years, a little bit over that. And recently, it's been uh, uh, public. Uh, okay, it won't. Uh, biometrics authentication. Uh, you enroll a biometric sample, and then you compare the uh, biometric sample to whatever biometric sample you create when you want to uh, authenticate, <laughs> and then it either matches or you know it's not a match. Uh, it's usually used for security, uh, mainly used for security. And uh, it's definitely more sec secure than a, uh, a password. Uh, a lot harder to spoof a password. And it can be used for uh, convenience, but uh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, if you want to be really secure, you should use a password and biometrics. It should be the way to go. Uh, there's different kinds of biometrics, and uh, you know, not one type can work for everyone. So, uh, like, there's iris, which would be scanning the iris around the pupil with a near-infrared light. There's fingerprint, where you just put your finger on a scanner. You uh, can scan your face, <laughs> or uh, voice recognition, which is scanning the, the pitch, the, uh, the quality, and intensity of the voice signal. And each has advantages and disadvantages. Uh, using a fingerprint is, I would say, the easiest to use. Uh, it takes up generally a little bit of space, uh, but there, there's health concerns for most people. They don't want to use the same scanner that everyone else is using because countless people touch it every day. And yeah, uh, Iris doesn't have that problem because there's no contact required. Uh, you just put your eye in front of the uh, scanner, and it takes a image. It's sometimes difficult to capture, because if you move, it'll get blurry, and it won't be a match. Uh, face, it's commonly available, as far as sensors go, because you can use a surveillance camera if you want to. Uh, but again, the face may be blocked by hair. Or well, same with the iris, that it can be blocked with hair. I forgot to mention. Uh, voice, uh, again, commonly available sensors, because all it is is just a uh, voice input. And uh, like phones, obviously every phone has a voice input. Uh, it could be difficult to control the sensor with uh, background noises and such. Other disadvantages would be uh, some biometric features do not remain constant. Uh, with age, faces seem to change, so you would have to enroll again to authenticate properly. And poor image qual uh, quality image if you move while it's uh, scanning the image. Uh, it's currently used in schools, usually uh, lunch programs, uh, amusement parks. Um, uh, if you buy a pass, they want to make sure it's the same person that's using it. They want to make sure it's uh, used on the same day, or if it's an, in a, an annual pass, it's the same person. Uh, banks typically use a pin and biometrics, so that way just it's more secure. It might be less convenient that way, but you, yeah, you're going to want it be, to be more secure. And with the future, it's going to be definitely more widespread and uh, public. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if 
so in conclusion, it's going to be widespread uh, definitely in the next four years. Uh, it's very inexpensive, which is my surprise. Uh, uh, user friendly, and uh, it keeps getting better every year, or all the time. So, any questions? Oh, I no. <laughs> I just looked it up. Uh, as far I, as fingerprinting in terms of banks, is there any banks you found that were using it? Uh, no, it just said like all banks are using it from what I found. So, yeah. Okay. So, any other questions? Chase has those. What now? Chase Bank has those. Chase? Okay. All right, well, let's give him a hand. Good job. Right. Number three.